University of the Western Cape has developed a DNA profiling kit that differentiates between male and female genetic material. The aim is to help identify perpetrators of sexual assault and other crimes against women. Researchers at the Forensic DNA Laboratory have spent almost two decades developing the kits. Uh, for more on why this is so important, we're joined by reporter Nobesutu Hecha. Now, Nobesutu, tell me more about this interesting development. Um, I'm hoping that you're with somebody who will be able to explain to us, uh, you know, this is an exciting new technology that will be able to differentiate even further DNA results. Well, certainly, Masejo. In fact, exciting news for the University of the Western Cape because this new um, DNA profiling kit will not only identify um, sexual assault uh, perpetrators uh, during cases, but also profiling or being able to collect data from males in different provinces in the country so that they can be able to identify or trace back their ancestry. Uh, but I'm now joined by the University of the Western Cape spokesperson, Mr. Uh, Hassan Abada. Uh, tell us about this new venture. Obviously, it's exciting news. Uh, more will be uh, received from this. Yeah, I know it is exciting for the University of the Western Cape. It's called the Unique uh, uh, Q unique Q type of whiting kit and it's been in development with a prototype some few years ago but there's been updates made so while it's still a, f a, a far away from being commercialized because there's some legal and scientific processes that need to be uh, that need to take place before it's introduced into the criminal justice system um, it does serve a dual purpose so we're collecting DNA with a South African or African specific uh, database we, in the past, we relied on some American reference studies to profile DNA. So it is quite exciting. The university considers itself as a research-led institution um, that prides itself for the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And this is part of us making research relevant to the context of where we find ourselves in, in the global and national context. And obviously it's the first in the country, but you did mention earlier to me that it has been used in Zimbabwe and it was able to solve the case. Tell us about that. Yeah, so it's been used in Zimbabwe to exonerate, exonerate a suspect. And what makes it unique is, you know, in contact crimes like rape, it's usually very difficult and messy with DNA because there's, there's often a female victim and a male victim and sometimes multiple um, perpetrators. And so it's able to discern between the male victim's DNA, I mean the male perpetrator's DNA and the female victim, but also where there's multiple uh, accused, distinguish between those accused even when there are people from the same family line with the same similar DNA. So DNA is like a thumbprint, and often while that's, that thumbprint is unique, there are very similar strands, but this uh, DNA kit can distinguish not only between the male um, DNA, but also distinguish between family members. So that makes it very unique. And we're excited that this can address some of the hesitancy in, in, in people reporting crimes like rape because there's a, there might be a, a lack of faith in the criminal justice system to solve cases. And tell us about the partnership. Obviously, uh, the institution has roped in uh, stakeholders that will help to uh, commercialize this, and it can be used um, even in the court system, because you did say also that it's not out yet, as you're still waiting for um, to be on the clear with the justice system and obviously the police. Yeah, and there's also scientific hoops that we still need to jump through before we can even get there. But we are working with two partners um, in the biotech space. So the one uh, partner in, uh, primarily in the SADC region is called Iklaba, and then there's another local company looking to commercialize this and make it available uh, widely to um, help the law enforcement agencies to, to have a more clearer picture. You know, I mean... When we watch television and programs like CSI, they pop a swab into a computer and a suspect's face comes up. And that's the Hollywood version of DNA evidence. So it's not like that. It's quite a, a complicated thing. But obviously DNA evidence goes a long way to solving cases like these. And it can even look back at cases from many years ago if the integrity of the DNA data has been stored correctly and along scientific conditions that makes it possible to have unequivocal, unequivocal evidence. What's also exciting for us is South Africa 
has 16 population groups, the study found, that, that helped develop this kit. And so we're able to track particularly male, male DNA into the ancestry and how it differs from case to case. So as I mentioned before, DNA evidence relied heavily on American studies, uh, especially Afro-American and Hispanic groups. So now we're looking at a South African database. And in that study, um, the unique DNA of more than 2,000 male South Africans was gathered, and that's quite exciting in terms of DNA study and biotechnology study. All right, thank you very much, Awal Masako. That was uh, Hassan Abada from the University of the Western Cape. I think the important note uh, that we need to take from this is the fact that he mentioned that um, this can also trace cases that probably took place maybe many years ago or 10 years ago, but if all the necessary uh, data was collected and stored properly, so it will be a major breakthrough to the justice system, system especially for gender-based violence um, victims who often uh, feel like their cases are not well um, looked after and there aren't many prosecutions.